Welcome to second video of fatty acid utilization that is lipolysis. If you haven't watched previously uploaded video with respect to overview of fatty acid catabolism, please watch that video and come back to this video. So in this video, we are going to talk about lipolysis or hydrolysis of triglycerides which is stored in our adipose tissues. For this, we are going to study a very important enzyme which is a lipase and this lipase is called hormone sensitive lipase. So we already studied in the previous video overview. So today we are going to talk about lipolysis. The first step hydrolysis of stored lipids that is triglycerides and release of fatty acids. So this step is also called mobilization of fatty acid into the tissues. Let's go and see the step. Basically lipolysis means hydrolysis of triglyceride by lipase. So very important enzyme. So lipase actually hydrolyzes triacylglycerol or triglyceride which are nothing but the lipids stored in our body mainly in the adipose tissue and even in the liver and some other tissues. So these triglycerides undergo hydrolysis with the help of an enzyme lipase and to give fatty acids. So it will cleave fatty acids one by one and release fatty acids and this will be glycerol backbone. So this glycerol backbone will be taken to liver and utilized for gluconeogenesis. Now this lipase which is a very important enzyme unlike lipoprotein lipase which is present in the wall of the capillaries this lipase which is present in the adipocyte actually is stimulated by many hormones like adrenaline or epinephrine, noradrenaline or norepinephrine, glucagon and adenocorticotropic hormone. These hormones stimulate this lipase. In other words, these hormones favors lipolysis, breakdown of triglycerides and yield fatty acids. Similarly, this lipase can be inhibited by an important hormone, insulin. So, insulin inhibits this lipase. Whenever there is sufficient insulin in our body, there will not be lipolysis or breakdown of fatty acids. So, that is the reason diabetic patients they will undergo more lipolysis and they are more prone for diabetic ketoacidosis. This lipase which is required for hydrolysis of triglycerides and present in the adipocyte is influenced by the hormones. So its activity can be enhanced or inhibited. So that is why we call this as HSL or hormone sensitive lipase. So you should know the difference between hormone sensitive lipase and lipoprotein lipase which we already studied in LDL and chylomicron metabolism. So there are different isoenzymes of lipase. So we will see little more information of this lipase because its function affected by hormones. Either some hormones could stimulate or enhance its activity or Insulin can inhibit its activity so that it prevents lipolysis. So we will see how exactly this hormone sensitive lipase affected by or influenced by hormones. So here I have taken one adipocyte. So this is cell membrane of adipocyte and we know that the first step is mobilization or breakdown of stored triglyceride to fatty acids. Triglycerides undergo hydrolysis and yield fatty acids in presence of 
lipase and which we already studied we call this lipase as hormone sensitive lipase why we call hormone sensitive lipase because its activity is influenced by many hormones now you should know this lipase actually exist in our body in two forms one is active hormone sensitive lipase another one is inactive hormone sensitive lipase active hormone sensitive lipase is nothing but it is phosphorylated form so this you might have studied under enzyme regulation there is a type of regulation called covalent modification either by phosphorylation or deposphorylation some enzymes are active when they are phosphorylated some enzymes are active when they are deposphorylated hormone sensitive lipase is one such enzyme which is active when it is phosphorylated so this inactive hormone sensitive lipase can be activated by an enzyme protein kinase now we will see how this hormone sensitive lipase can be switched either active form or inactive form by the influence of hormones so in the cell membrane of adipocyte we have a receptor and this receptor is called 7 tm receptor which is a trans membrane receptor and this particular receptor is mainly for the hormones like adrenaline noradrenaline glucagon and acth when this hormone or any one of these hormone bind to this receptor there will be signal of cascade which stimulates an enzyme called adenylate cyclase this is adenylate cyclase again which is attached to the cell membrane and this enzyme when it is activated it stimulates atp to form an important intermediate called cyclic amp so these are all hormones its action because these hormones has the receptor in the cell membrane so they cannot go inside the cell membrane they will transmit their signals through some of the intermediates and this is called second messenger now whatever action of these hormones by this cyclic amp so this is a very important intermediate and we call it as a second messenger now the role of cyclic amp is stimulates protein kinase so that inactive hormone sensitive lipase will going to become active hormone sensitive lipase by phosphorylation this is a covalent modification of this protein kinase enzyme again there are different steps i am not going in detail because even this protein kinase exists in inactive and active form so this is how these hormones which stimulates or enhance the activity of hormone sensitive lipase so that more and more stored triglycerides in our adipose tissue undergo hydrolysis to yield fatty acids similarly we have another receptor in the cell membrane of adipocyte it is insulin receptor when insulin bind to this receptor again there are different signal cascade and finally this signal will inhibit formation of cyclic amp you must understand here this hormones whether it is adrenaline or norepinephrine glucagon acth they actually stimulates formation of cyclic amp which in turn stimulates protein kinase so that there will be formation of active hormone sensitive lipase whereas insulin inhibits formation of cyclic amp so that the inactive hormone sensitive lipase will remain like that if there is no formation of active hormone sensitive lipase then there is no question of hydrolysis of triglycerides this is how insulin inhibits this enzyme so this explains 
this lipase which is present in our adipocyte its activity is affected by hormones either its activity can be enhanced or it can be inhibited so this is actually the first step mobilization of fatty acids from the triglycerides once these fatty acids are formed it will be transported to tissue through the circulation with the help of albumin so in the next video we are going to study activation of this fatty acid in the cytoplasm thanks for watching